Hey everyone, this is Diego and welcome to Lister's Notes. Today we're going to be talking about the new project from Brockhampton called Saturation 2. Brockhampton is a massive hip-hop collection out of California, rocking a lot of big indie hip-hop names you might have heard of, such as Kevin Abstract and Dom McLennan. And they have exploded with popularity this year after the release of their second project, Saturation 1, which I loved. It wasn't perfect, and it started to drag towards the end, just because there were a few slower songs that failed to keep my attention. Plus, throughout the album, a few of the vocal effects were a little too obnoxious for me, and the closer really was too much uh, Frank Ocean worship for its own good. But still, the singles were fantastic, and there were just so many great tracks on that album. What's unique about Brock Hampton, at least in comparison with other modern collectives like the ASAP Mob and Odd Future, is that every single vocalist on Brock Hampton's roster is actually talented, and they all have unique styles and personalities worth paying attention to. Combine that with some really unique production that has a knack for finding a catchy melody and just writing it through the song, and we have ourselves easily one of the best hip-hop groups of this size since probably the Wu-Tang Clan, and I don't care if that's a blasphemous statement, because after this album, I think they have earned it. Saturation 2 is absolutely fantastic, and it honestly ended up being way better than, than I expected it would be. Everything about it, the production, the performances, it's just all meticulous and wildly entertaining. Starting with the song Gummy, which was the first single released off this album. This song hits us with some nice synth layers on the beat, and there's so many layers of just sound play here, and the pitch shifted vocals on the hook are done so tastefully, and that's a thing about this album. This is a huge sign of growth. There's no moment on this album where the pitch shifted vocals are annoying or obnoxious to me. They're done in a way that is tasteful and actually adds to the songs. It comes off as more sound play, which I appreciate. The next song, Queer, has this trap-influenced instrumental with some sour tones, in, but this song is just so high-octane with the beat. This vibe is just perfect for Merlin's rap style, and the hook is so freaking good with the pitch-shifted vocals and the gentle flute-sounding tones in the background. I love the structure of this song, too. I think the bridge where Matt Champion comes in is actually really nice because it keeps the song super varied and constantly interesting. The following song, Jello, has a nice off-kilter beat to it with some really fast flows. It's a bit more low-key when it comes to, to the layering of sounds, but I think this song is really fast-paced and I still enjoy the melodies on it. And Brockhampton isn't really a group that relies on rapid-fire flows to keep my attention, so a one-off song that has them is super effective. It comes off fresh and new. Just like Saturation 1, Saturation 2 also has a few really short interlude tracks that are about a minute long or so, but here the songs are just better executed. Teeth has this really nice vocal sample, and Amir is talking about his come up dealing with racism and just other hardships and how he used that to build his success. He's talking about how he got the drive to reach where he is today. and. The following song, Swamp, has another killer hook, which is insanely catchy, and the melodies on this song are so freaking good. And Dom's flow is just insane. He really kills this song when he comes in with just that rapid flow. Tokyo has a great performance from Kevin Abstract, and the saxophone sample on this song is absolutely gorgeous and really supports the, the vocals, in my opinion. Another song where Dom's flow switch-ups are just sonically pleasing is Tokyo as well. The song Chick features a line from Match Champion where he references Karabas, which I thought was hilarious. And lyrically, I like that Matt is talking about having confidence despite what people say about you and on that that song as well Amir takes a step further and he talks about people talking about him on on social media and keyboard warriors and just essentially dealing with people like that the following song, Junkie, is one of the most unique samples on the album. It's super eerie, and Kevin Abstract delivers a very dark verse about coming out to his mother, who didn't accept him until he was making money. He also mentions, you know, the lack of gay rappers, and he also mentions how people are killed for being gay. So I feel that this song was sort of him explaining why he's so open about it in his music. And his dark verse just ends with this insane noodling instrumental freak out with a deep voice just shouting over it. It's so 
good. It's very intense, it's very visceral, and it leads perfectly into the next verse. And the song Fight has Amir dropping the best Brockhampton verse I've heard this far. He talks about race issues, and just the way he talks about it is so grim and dark. And at the same time, though, his rhyming and his flows are just so dope and sonically pleasing. I love the verse, and he's spitting over this low-key but super sinister sounding instrumental that eventually blows up when Merlin and Kevin start freaking out on it. And a side note, I do think that Amir talking about, you know, his skin color being almost a target and people seeing him as something to just hang on a tree and all these dark and grim images are very necessary and I think they meld perfectly with the overall aesthetic and vibe of the song. I like that Brockhampton is not afraid to include content like this when it comes to either looks or race or gender or sexuality because it definitely adds staying power to their songs and just makes them more interesting as a group as a whole. The sample on the song Sweet is absolutely beautiful and then the last three songs we have here are sort of a slowdown for the album with a bit more balladry. The song Gamba is definitely heavy with vocal effects but I don't mind them at all. I think they help build this synthetic but very hazy vibe that the song is saturated in. There's so many different layers of sound. It's almost um, chill wave inspired. It also reminds me a bit of shoegaze. And I just love how engulfing the mix is. I'm almost like transported into this world because the sounds are just so overbearing. And the song Sunny is another slow track with this sort of abrasive drone, but it also has these gentle guitar notes and some twinkling keys. And this song just comes to an incredible melodic conclusion at the end. I really love that. And finally, the song Summer is an amazing closer, which is much better than the closer in Saturation 1, in my opinion. On Summer, Bareface sings gently over some guitar and keys, and the lyrics might be related to something that Kevin Abstract talked about on his last solo album. It sort of seems similar to his story with his boyfriend from the, the football team, which was also featured on a music video. I'm not 100% sure, but it just seems similar in theme. And that's kind of my rundown as far as the entire album is concerned. As far as opinions go, it's just so much more mature than their past work. There's a lot less filler here. The vocal effects are done much better. Also, there's just a lot of small changes that I really appreciate. The skits have much better backing sound to them, much better instrumentation. The ballads have a lot more sound play and they stay interesting. If a, a beat is going to be more low key in this album, it is met with better flows and just better sounds. And with all of that being said, I do have some complaints about this album. They're very minor though. For one, I'm not a big fan of Merlin's verse on Sunny. His performance is just way too amped for a song that's this laid back and vibey. I mean, the guy is straight howling like a dog for his ad-libs. And I like him. I think he's perfect for the aggressive banger type songs. And even occasionally when he's not like screaming in his accent, he sounds okay on a slower song. But performing like that over that beat just sounded so strange. And it kind of didn't really work in my opinion. And I think that the song Jello can be underwhelming at times, but I still really enjoy this song. And I enjoy Sunny too, for that matter. There's not a single track here that I'd avoid. It's just that good. They really manage to take their sound from Saturation 1 and just hone it and perfect it and make possibly the best album you could make at this style that I've seen. They really showed evolution here. Now, it is very similar to Saturation 1 in my opinion. It's just a much better and more refined version. So if you outright thought just what they were going for on Saturation 1 wasn't good, you might not enjoy this album. I know Brockhampton has said that they have another project, Saturation 3, coming out this year. But after these two great albums, I don't even know if I want it, to be completely honest. You know, I worry that they're not going to give fans, and my, myself included, enough time and separation to really digest these. The last thing I want to do is get tired of this sound because I've heard it so much. All I ask is that they, they drop it really late in 2017, like maybe November, or even push it back to early 2018 in January or February. Both would be great ideas, regardless of what happens to Saturation 3, though. Saturation 2 is a resounding success, and as of right now, it is easily my favorite album of the year. It is a 97 out of 100 for me and an absolute must listen for anyone who likes pop, hip-hop, or R&B. 
yes, at times there are a lot of odd sounds, things aren't typical in terms of those genres, but nobody is pushing group hip-hop forward like these guys are. This isn't another throwaway garbage ASAP Mob album. Brockhampton is truly a unique group and they have come out with yet another spectacular project. Please give this thing a shot. Give it a listen. It is worth it. I promise you. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments below and I'll see you on the next video.